Right, this is uh, day three of working on the patterns. Now I got the patterns over here. They're all nice and solid, hardened up. I sanded them a little bit. They're ready to roll, ready to go. And these are, of course, the backs. I got to make the little centerpiece. But um, now I got to make a match plate. I got to get that ready. I had to go to the Home Depot this morning and get a piece of um, birch veneer or maple, I don't know what it is, but it's 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 sanded and it's it's solid core. It's got probably two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ply. It's solid. You can't use whatever you do, do not use ply score or ply sheet, you know, the stuff you use on the side of the house or on the roof. That's not what you use. You gotta use solid good wood. Now, unfortunately, I used to buy this stuff in 4 by 8 sheets. There was a lot of trouble wrestling around. And one of the shops I had, I had a panel saw. It was easy to cut. I cut them up in boards. But you never know what side board you're going to need. So it's not, it doesn't pay to really cut them ahead of time. Um, here's my, up here, that's my flash. The cattail is the foundry and the flash size. They have, um, the sizes they have is the 12, 14, 14, 16, 14, 18, 17, 22, 20 by 20, and 24 by 24. Now that's the inside part of the flask. Okay, they use a two-pin steel flask. Now there's another. There's a flask called a Heinz H I N E S Heinz flask, and it's actually it's tapered like this. From the the, the drag is the bottom, the cope is the top. So it's tapered from the cope to the drag. And the corners, you, you snap the corners down and it pulls it in together tight and when you ram it up. Now when you want to get it off, you snap it like that, you pull it off, you, and the whole flask just comes right off. And then you have what's called, you have a molding board underneath, a heavy board with two other boards on the bottom and that's what you can pick it up with because that's how you move the mold to the floor. But you have to put a jacketing on that. There's a metal aluminum thing that goes right over the joint. It comes down and kind of holds them together. So you have to have a bunch of jackets. So... Um, Six of one and a half a dozen the other. You got a bunch of steel flasks around or a bunch of jackets. So this foundry happens to have um, uh, just one type of uh, a board. And for some reason, I don't have one here, but some reason or other, they their boards, they take them and they cut the 45 degree angles on a corner. Other ones, they have like a keyhole shape. I don't know why it's different. And uh, another thing about patterns, like, for example, in the couplers, I did 10,000 couplers, literally 10,000 pair of couplers is 20,000 couplers, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, not much, but around that area. And uh, when I um, went from one foundry to another just to get some other castings made from a different foundry, I got to remember, I did maybe 5,000 castings at this point. The guy says, who the heck made this pattern? This ain't right, da, 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 da. You know, every foundry's different. So yeah, I just let it, I used to get mad, I had to heck with it. So now, I'm going to cut this board, and what I have to do, I made this sled, you know. Whoop, works pretty good. Now here's the thing with these, with these boards. You have, you have, let's say the 14, the, we'll do the most common 14, 16. That's the inside of the flask. You need a board 16 by 23. So I cut it 16 this way down and 23 which is 24 so you can get two boards out of this. However, however the 18 flask has to be, the board has to be 16 by 25. So if I take the 16 and have this piece left over for making flasks or something, uh, making little you know frameworks for the different stuff. Um, I, if I cut it at the 25, that's going to leave uh, 23, which is still good. That's still good. I can do, I can do it, but here's the, here's the drawback. If I want a, 12, a, a 14, 18, I got to add two inches to the end. So the thing to do would be to cut it at 24 and add one inch or an inch and a quarter to the end of it, and that becomes a 25 14, uh, 16, 25, or 14, 18. And then the other one, if I need a 12, 16, or a 
what is it, a 1416, which is a, a 1623 board, I could just cut the inch off. So I'd rather have it that way in case I want to make a bigger board. I'd rather not put two inches because then at that point what happens is the holes in the flash for the, for the um, pins, is, it, it, it's going to make it too weak on the end. So I have to take a piece of this, rip it down, and nail it on the end here, which actually I'll put long screws two, 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 and make sure they're away from the middle and uh, glue it and screw it. And I used to, I even put biscuits in there, which is a waste of time. But the, the, that seems to work, glue and, and screw it and tighten it up with a couple of nice clamps tight. And uh, then I take some, uh, in, the, in, the, in the pattern business, you don't use Bondo, never use Bondo. And, uh, well, I shouldn't say never, but you don't use Bondo for filler. This stuff is called Tough Carve. It's carvable, basically like body filler, same thing, but it's softer. And it's more like a woodish, wood type, where the Bondo is tough. Now, if you need that for some reason, well, okay, then you use the Bondo, but, and I do use it, but this stuff here is the stuff, this is about like my fourth can of this stuff, and it works the same way, a little bit of on air and go, go to town with it. Okay, so now we're going to cut this, and i got to find a crazy so here's the pencil the pencil when I say the pencil I mean there's the only one we got okay and you come over here and you mark this now I gotta hit this right in the middle and we're gonna well first of all I gotta cut it down the other way that's right I gotta cut it to 16 first well not necessarily Cause, well I'd rather I'd rather do that and have a long piece so let me do that get this down here and I have no way to catch it I'm going to take this off, put it over here. I made this slide like Norm Abrams, but I use wood, a little hardwood. I'd rather have metal, but I don't have it. It works. It does the job. Definitely does the job. Okay, so now we're going to bring this over. 16 now. Here we go. Always use this. <laughs> okay, now you got to raise that up a little bit because you got a little bit more. And take this and you put this in the sled. Get this out of the way in the sled, line it up so it's right in the center of that mark because you sacrificed either way. Pull it tight, ready to go. Pull it tight. I have a board over there. There's another one over there. I got two, but I need it to need it to more. So I have them. Put them out here. Put that one out there. Take this one and get it ready to do the next phase, which is putting the piece on the end. Okay. All right. Um, got the board cut. Got the one inch piece cut off. Got it laid out approximately. Now, see, do you come in two inches from the end? I'm going to put a 45. Two inches from the end, put a 45. That's the way the boards are made. I don't have no idea, rhyme or reason why they're like that. But uh, I got the clamps all preset pre here. So what we're going to do, put a little glue on it. And I use this glue here. This is probably the best stuff. Back in the day, you used to have the white glue. Remember that? And uh, put some glue on it. Put it out. Put that on there. Get lined up. I mean, this is, you know, 
pretty elementary. And you clamp, clamp, clamp this to make sure it don't tip up because your cut can't, may not be perfect. I got to drill it. Battery shot. I would keep batteries on charge. Okay, uh, I decided to show you how this Bondo stuff works. And if you were here and be able to smell it, you'd smell it and say, that smells just like Bondo. So you take a glob of it out, put it on here. That should be enough, hopefully, to do both sides. And equal amount of hardener. If you look at the size of the hardener to compare it to that, that's how much you put out, kind of like a ratio. And you, I never could figure this out. You got a little tiny golf ball of stuff there, and a uh, little tiny pea size of, of the hardener. When you mix it up like this, it, uh, I just always use this piece of metal. I mean, you got to use the big, uh, the big uh, Just put it on there. We're going to sand it with the sander, you know, and I got it up on the, my blocks. Of course, I always put too much. Put it down like that. Woo! You ever do any spackling? It's a real art, man. Perfections in the board you can take care of them at this point and I don't worry about the doing the uh, the screws it don't matter well always mix up more than you need I guess and that's it all right had a little lunch went up to town and got some uh, Amish fried chicken boy that's the best stuff mashed potatoes anyhow I'm gonna sand this down and then we're going to cut the corners and dress it up, and then we're going to paint it. So we'll do that first. <laughs> Two inches, just, you know, nothing fussy. Two. Two. Just hit this here. Like that. Nothing fussy, I'm telling you. Do the other side.
That's it. Done. On to the next case. Just going to uh, painting it up. We'll get it painted, then we'll get it mounted.